Hello and welcome to this quick overview of a couple of new features in Worldographer. My name is Joe Wetzel, the creator of Worldographer. The two features that we're going to talk about are the new toolboxes functionality and our map layer functionality. For toolboxes, we're introducing this uh, checkbox up here, which um, will allow you to use the toolboxes instead of the drawers that are traditionally used, um, have been used with Worldographer until now. Um, let's create a quick uh, new map just to kind of show, show what I'm talking about. So those of you who are familiar with Worldographer would be expecting to have a sidebar over here on the right side that has all of the um, drawers with all the controls for editing shapes and terrain and having a mini map and so forth. And instead of that, we've got, um, uh, we, we're gonna use uh, floating dialogues. So that's what we're calling the toolboxes. Um, if you want the drawers there, just uh, leave this unchecked and they appear. And it's just like it was before, except you've got the layers uh, drawer as well, which is something new. Um, and that just lists the different layers that are available. And we'll get to that in a moment. But let's go back to having our, our dialogues, our floating dialogues. So we can pull up a mini map little dialogue here, for example, and we can pull up the layers that I had just shown and the important thing is that um, if you want to be editing um, the features, moving features and labels and shapes between layers, you're going to want to have the layers dialog open in addition to probably having the mini map open so you can kind of pan around easily um, and have another drawer such as the features drawer open. Uh, let's quickly get a couple of a bunch of features added to the map by going to generate generate nations and empires and this is going to auto auto populate a number of capital cities and cities and towns and resources and borders for different uh, nations and empires um, onto the map for you so it does that really quick um, and you can see each color each each country kind of has its own color um, for its translucency and a shading and if you don't like that we can you can change that. Um, they're all just shapes, so I can pull up the shapes dialog as well, for example, and click um, select rather here, click select, and then click one of them, and then I can say that I don't want any fill, for example, and then you would only have, you only have the border there. I should note that I'm using a smaller uh, screen uh, resolution here. I'm, I'm only sharing, I'm only recording one quarter of my screen just to make the video um, a little bit more uh, easier to download or easier to stream so that's uh, so normally you would have a lot more room on your map to see the map in addition to having several of the dialogues open all right anyway with that out of the way let's go back to uh, selecting another one of these um, uh, shapes Oops, sorry select it instead of creating a shape. So now we've got this uh, other country shape uh, selected. You can see the points are all highlighted for us with little bluish um, dots. That tells us that that one is selected. And if we want to move this to another layer, now what's the purpose of, of moving this to another layer? Well, first of all, um, when we generated this, um, these countries, it put them on a new, it put the borders, the different country borders on this new layer borders. In addition to the map already having labels and features uh, above terrain, terrain land, above water, terrain water, below all, these are the layers that are kind of built in with every map. Labels are things that are only a label. For example, this gun cold, cold deer country name, for example, or two de J those are labels. Um, the labels that are tied to a particular feature are part of the feature. So these little city names are part of the feature. Um, but if I don't want to show the labels, I can turn them all off. If I don't want to show the country borders, I can turn them all off. If I don't want to show the features, I can turn them all off and so on. Um, above terrain here is used for shapes that are going to be displayed above the terrain. Terrain land is really just for the terrain, the, the, the hexes these uh, squares, whatever your grid type might be, um, that is terrain, uh, that is land, I should say. Then you've got another, another layer for putting shapes that might be above the water but below the land. That's good for having like a coastline if you want to have a more 
a prettier looking coastline. Um, for example, if I generate coast here, you're going to see that it automatically places little shapes to kind of round things out so you don't have such a, um, so your shapes don't match exactly with the hexagon, uh, your coastlines rather. Then we've got the terrain water, so this is the, all the all the terrain that is water, and then another layer for below all, where if you wanted to have some sort of backing, uh, some kind of background type thing, um, you could do that instead of using the water, for example, or some other uses for other types of maps as well. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, what I wanted to show you was uh, moving things to a new layer, for example. So let's let's add a new layer, and let's say that we wanted to put everything for a particular country on its own layer because maybe the other countries don't like that and they don't recognize it on their maps. Uh, they don't like that country, so they don't want to recognize that that country even exists. So let's do this, Dun Kuldar Deer Country. Let, let, let's make it its own layer. So we click OK, and we've already got the shape selected. If we want to add it um, to that particular layer, we can now switch it in this layer placement um, drop down and we can switch it to that and now it's on the other layer and I'm going to deselect it just so that it's not highlighted anymore and now if I turn that off you see it disappears. Likewise if I pull up the labels um, dialog I can select this gun Kuldar um, country switch the layer to it and then I can also go and pull bring back over my features and I can select, say, this one, and switch the layer for this, and I can deselect that one, um, and pick another one, for example, and go and select it again, and so forth. So I could do that with all of these, and throw them all on there, and then if I disappear this, uh, or if I turn this layer off, all those things would disappear, assuming once we added these couple of others onto that layer. Um, so that's the functionality that we're that we're doing that's new for this, and, and you can do a lot of uh, other things with it. It can lead to a lot of interesting things. You could do the same thing, you know, like I, uh, the example that I was giving was for having different maps where you've got um, uh, different versions of the map where you've got uh, some some things are not recognized by another country, but you also could do something where if you've got, you want to have your world map in, in the year 1000 and the world map in the year 1200, and you wanted to update the country borders, you can do something like that. For our city mapping functionality, we also put the vegetation on its own layer. And if you saw my prior, um, prior video where I was kind of previewing some of this functionality, um, you could you could see that the vegetation was added to its own layer so you can kind of toggle that on and off. Going down the road, we're not doing this yet, but you could do something where if you're doing a battle mat, you could turn on and off. Uh, you could put certain things on, on different layers to turn them on and off, such as um, all of the place settings on a table. Maybe you don't care about that um, for some views of, of the map, so you could put those on its own layer, for example. You could put different rooms on different layers um, and you know, might make them easier to move around going down, uh, down the road when we add some more functionality. So that's what we're releasing here in, in this release. This is version 1.150. Currently, as of today, this is October 10th right now, this is only available in a test release that we're doing, which is at worldographer.com slash test. It's not directly linked right now, and in the next few days, couple weeks, we'll make it part of the main release. But because there's a couple of um, large changes behind the scenes, uh, we wanted to make sure that we give this some more time to, um, to for people to give it a try, shake things out, make sure that there's nothing, nothing um, terrible, nothing, no bad bugs get into the release. Um, the other the other thing that I'll say is this is also something that was voted on um, by our patrons on our Patreon, which is at patreon.com slash ideas, and I appreciate the support from everybody there. And with that, I think I'm just going to leave it to, I hope that this tool just uh, allows you to make some great looking maps. Thanks for your interest. <laughs>